Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Tanya and it's nice for you to be joining the Paradig family. Um, I can't believe how much like support and love I got on that last video. Like honestly, I'm so grateful and thankful that so many of you liked it and watched it and it just made me so happy to know that I actually helped quite a lot of you out because I found it really tough applying for uni. I felt like there wasn't many videos out there, I didn't have anyone to speak to, I wasn't at college, um, so knowing that I've kind of helped a few of you for preparing for, preparing for your degree, that actually makes me so happy, <laughs> you don't understand. Anyway, in today's video this is all going to be about applying for paramedic science or paramedic practice degree, what to look out for and just like the process before you actually go on to UCAS and apply, just the tips and tricks, things to look out for and the things which I felt really really helped me and the things that I wish I knew beforehand um so yeah if you want to know all about applying for a paramedic degree then just keep watching so again I've got a little list on my phone um I'll go through this throughout the video um just to help because honestly my memory is appalling at the minute like I said in my last video it's like a week until my exam week nerves are kicking in I'm stressed and I literally cannot remember a thing so I've got my phone here to just guide me through it. So the first one is choosing your uni. Um, this is all going to be personal to me as well as like helping you with your experience. But I'm a little bit old, so I'm not straight from college. I mean, I know I'm not old, but I'm not straight from college. Um, I'm 23 next month, so is it next month? I don't even know my own birthday. My birthday is in June. I'm 23 in June anyway. Um, so I didn't have like uni putting on fairs or explaining the different courses, what to look out for or even helping me with UCAS. So I kind of had to do it all myself, which has been quite tricky. Um, so with choosing your uni, I think you get five choices. For me, I wanted to stay at home. I didn't really fancy moving away and going into student accommodation. Um, for me it was really important that I got a uni which was close to where I lived so I lived just on like the outskirts of Manchester. So Edge Hill University for me was my top choice. Um, the course is on the, in the St James building in Manchester. So that was like the course that I really really wanted to get onto. My backup was also Preston um, University because that wasn't too far for me to travel either if I got into that one. So when looking for your uni if you are wanting to move away from home, things like that, look at the town, um, your accessibility for when you're on placement. So I'm going to talk about driving and things like that on the next topic. Um, but just really look into which uni, which course you think looks the most interesting, where you want to live and where you're going to feel most comfortable. And at the end of the day, it's going to be a home away from home for three years if you're moving away. So you need to make sure that you're happy and comfortable there at the uni you choose. So it's massively important to first of all do your research about where you feel that you'd like to live yourself, the universities which shout out to you the most um, and go from there. So let's have a look what's next on my list. So researching what you need with the qualifications and things like that. So a lot of the unis have a set amount of UCAS points you have to meet I believe. Um, I think Edge Hill had one of the lowest ones. I did okay in my A-levels, but I didn't really do amazingly. But luckily for me, I went to dance school for a couple of years and got quite a lot of good ballet qualifications, which added to my UCAS points. But still, I only just hit the amount that we needed, and that was for Edge Hill with one of the lower amounts. So looking at things like that, looking at UCAS points, how many UCAS points are needed. If there's certain qualifications, I think some universities ask for... I think is it a couple of sciences or at least biology or things like that edge hill didn't have anything like that as long as you hit those ucas points i feel like it was 116 ucas points you needed i think that was right as long as you hit that ucas point then it was fine it didn't matter where those ucas points came from they just wanted you to hit them um but they also the other good thing with edge hill university they also said that they would look at your UCAS in your personal statement, they wouldn't just disregard you straight away for not hitting the UCAS points. 
that's what happened to me with Preston. I didn't hit the, the amount of UCAS points that was needed. Um, and they just declined me straight away. So <laughs> I was really nervous waiting to hear back from Ed Chill, but they were really understanding, which was good. So looking at that, looking at what qualifications to need and things like that. So this is quite a big one now. So driving. I had already passed my test a couple of years ago. Um, so it was fine for me. I was already driving. I already had my own car because I'd been working full time since le le leaving college, really. Um, a lot of the paramedic science and paramedic practice degree courses do require to, you to have a normal driving license for when you're starting. This is just because I think they want you to start getting on with your C1, which is what allows you to drive something the size of an ambulance. So when you pass and you become a qualified paramedic, you can get on with your blue light course straight away. They just want it all to flow nice and easily for you. They want you to build up your experience and things like that. So being able to have your driving license before you start is a really, really big thing. So looking at that, some unis might not. I know that Edge Hill changed it last minute for ours because of COVID, people weren't able to do the test, things got cancelled. So they really understand it and things like that. But under usual conditions, I think a lot of them, you need to have a driving license. Um, so this puts me over to also to driving, having a car, things like that. When you're on placement, you're doing a lot of unsociable hours, night shifts, finishing at two o'clock in the morning, things like that. It is really, really handy to have a car. You don't have to rely on buses, trains, you don't have to be walking anything where it's dark or late. And it's just really nice to have that security blanket so if you are in a position where you're able to maybe borrow a parent's car if you're staying at home get insured on that or buy your own car or something like that then i find that was really really helpful for me having that um i really took it for granted me having my driving license and being able to drive before i started uni because it's been a godsend it's just so easy just getting in your car and going home because after a shift you're tired you don't know what you've seen you can have some really, really hard days um, and you just want to get in your car, you just want to go home <laughs> and crash. Honestly, take it from me, I'm on placement at the minute as well as studying for three exams. <laughs> I'm stressed, so when, when it's finishing time, I'm like, way, hey, get in a car, go home, dinner, pudding, revise, go to bed, repeat. <laughs> so just knowing you've not got to mess around on public transport, it's so much easier, honestly. So this is a really, really big one for me. Um, I actually think this is one of the biggest ones. It sounds really simple, but open days. All the units you're interested in, get to those open days, speak to the student paramedics, speak to the lecturers, and don't be afraid to ask as many questions as you want. You want your UCAS and your personal statement to be strong, and I am gonna be doing a separate video on personal statements because I think I aced my personal statement, I'm going to be honest, um, but it's because of all the hard work, effort and all the tips and trips that I, tips and trips, tips, <laughs> tips and tricks I got from along the way. So I feel like that'll be really helpful for a lot of you. But with the open days, it gives you a chance to ask the questions you're unsure of, you know, nothing's a silly question. We're applying, we don't know anything yet, so ask away, you know, you can ask what's the kind of thing you're going to be looking for on an applicant what's the kind of person you'll be looking for in an interview get all those questions in and make your personal statement in your interview strong gather everything together from what you've asked and put together what they want to see and um, i'll do more about this with an interview and a personal statement video but i got all my information from my open day i asked them what they were looking for in a personal statement got all their tips down things about an interview, what they're looking for in the interview process. And I basically just followed it step by step of what they were looking for, which honestly, I, I think that's what got me on the course. Um, I worked really, really hard with my application. I did, it didn't come easy. I put the time, I put the effort in, and hopefully this video can help a few of you out as well with that. Building up experience. With a course like this, I think they do look for a little bit of experience so I didn't have much to be honest I was a professional dancer before this and a dance teacher and then I worked in spectators for a little while 
But I also cared for my nana. My nana had Parkinson's for five years. She moved in with us and I cared for her most of the time. Um, I was in charge of time critical medications, a lot of things like that. That experience for caring for somebody, being in charge of medications, that really, really helped me on my personal statement because I had kind of that background, a little bit of a medical background. Um, and also with my dancing, for example, I had to be first aid trained um, so I could take I, I take good care of all the children if anything happened, any bumps on the heads, any falls over, any fall overs, anything like that. Um, so although it wasn't massive experience, any kind of experience really, really helped with getting me on the course, I believe. This is the kind of thing that I wrote about my personal statement, which obviously I said I'll discuss in another video. Um, but building up that experience is brilliant, you know, see if you can volunteer in care homes. I know it's quite hard at the minute with COVID, but any kind of experience that you can get to get onto this course will be amazing, well noted, and I just think it's a really big thing. If you've got some kind of experience to show that you're made for this job, it sounds really cringy, but you know, if you can prove to them that you're right for this course, this is the right career for you, then that's really, really good. So build up that experience before you apply. Even if it means setting your application back a year, it's really, really important to try and get a little bit of experience like that. So my next one is medical conditions. You do have like a medical examination. Well, it's not really an examination, but you do have to declare any medical conditions that you have. Um, so beforehand it might be worthwhile just checking if your certain medical condition would be okay. Um, I've got a kidney condition, I had full renal failure when I was a child. Um, I'm really fit and healthy but obviously that's something that I had to um, disclose. So beforehand I just tried to check and make sure that I wasn't going to get on the course, get through to occupational health and start my course and then get declined for having a medical condition. Um, so I do think that's a really important one to do. Um, if you have got any underlying conditions that you are worried about, just ask, you know, give the uni a ring, see if that's something that might be a problem. Usually it's not, they're really, really good, they're supportive, occupational health are really good as well. Um, so yeah, just double check, it'll just put you at ease um, for your whole process. And at the end of the day, if it's making everything a bit easier for you, then that's, that's good. So now, this is all about social media. So as I said in the last video, there's a group called So You Want To Be A Paramedic on Facebook. There's constant tips and tricks for applying on there. You will meet people who are already student paramedics like myself. I'm on there as well, which you can ask hundreds of questions to. I don't mind answering as many questions as you guys have. Honestly, if it means it helps you out, then I'm 100% willing to do it because I know it can be really, really tough. Um, there's also qualified paramedics on there. There's loads and loads of different people on there which all go together for helping each other. They're, re they're really, really nice. Honestly, they're lovely. But you get a lot of people applying, wondering how to be a paramedic, things like that. So just going on to a group like that, you can pick up so many different things. Things which I wasn't in a group like this beforehand. I didn't even know this was a group. And I feel like I missed out on a lot. You know tips for starting your degree things to buy which is why i'm making these videos for you guys but people are lovely and honestly we we will just answer any questions that you have because we've been in your position we know what it's like to apply to be stressed about getting the course the uni that you want so we're here to help at the end of the day we're not gonna ignore you or be mean or anything like that because we were in your position and we know it wasn't easy so yeah if you can get involved in some groups ask good people how they applied their opinions because everyone's opinion and everyone's experience will be completely different um, so i think that's really really handy and really good so next up ucas i think you can tell by my face i hated ucas hated it I didn't know what I was doing, I didn't think I was filling it out right, obviously it was just myself doing it, I've not come straight from college like I've said. So I was just constantly on edge thinking I'd filled it in wrong. The only thing I can say with UCAS, 
start it early you know do a little bit every day make sure you've got all your qualifications ready because you've got to put your GCSEs A levels things like that or I think it might be predicted grades when you're at A level I'm not too sure um any other qualifications, dance certificates, things like that to get your UCAS points up. Your personal statement, we'll get onto that in a different video, that needs a whole video um, dedicated to itself. But just take your time with it, that's the only thing I can say. I feel like I might have started mine thinking, oh it's only going to take me 20 minutes. And it really didn't, you know, you've got to get your references, things like that. So be prepared. Ask people you've worked for, lecturers, um, college teachers, whoever it is you want to sort your references out for you, ask them early, get them prepared because people are busy, you know, they've got other things to do. So the earlier that you get somebody to start the referencing, the quicker that your UCAS will be over, you know, whilst they're doing all things like that, you can be inputting your grades, your choices and all things like that. It's not too bad actually once you're on UCAS, it just takes time, that's the only thing, but read through it, make sure everything's right and just take your time with it. Make sure you start it way, way, way before the deadline. I think I actually started mine, was it? I think it was as soon as it reopened because I thought I'm just going to make an account, I'm going to get it going because I knew that there might have been a few little few little bumps in the road let's just say that and I'm so so glad I did because waiting for references to come back things like that you know getting your interviews done and out of the way sooner rather than later is just it's really good because it gives you more time to prepare if you get on the course it gives you more time to think of ways to get more experience before applying for the next year so just be just be ahead of the game you know be on it as soon as it opens up things like that that's my main piece of advice just be on top of it all get to your open days as soon as everything opens just get on it straight away so that's actually everything I think I'm preparing for applying obviously I have kind of discussed about UCAS as well and applying that way but just make sure you really research your choices whether you want to stay at home or move away driving, look for all the qualifications they need, whether they need a science, whether they don't, the UCAS points, what kind of things you've done which can build up your UCAS points, your experience, your medical experience, everything like that, um, getting into groups, chatting to people which are students, how they applied, just take all these tips and tricks on board, I know it might be different from other people and other people's experience but those are the things which I would recommend the most um, even if a university doesn't really have a preference on driving I think it's massively important to have your driving license anyway um, like I said getting to and from placement things like that it just makes it a lot easier and building up that experience ready for when you start doing your C1 and driving ambulances you'd rather be confident driving a normal car first than you know feeling like you've been thrown in the deep end um, I really hope this video has helped. If you have any questions, just pop them down below. I'm hopefully be doing a video next week all about personal statements, getting your perfect personal statement because honestly, I do think I smashed mine, but it was through a lot of hard work and research and things like that. Um, but yeah, I hope this video really helped. Any questions or anything at all, just pop it in the comment box. If you want to have any updates on um, courses or preparing to be a paramedic or anything like that it'd be lovely if you join the paramedic family and you hit that subscribe button and press like um but yeah i hope to see you in the next video bye